Israel is a land where strong history and faith intertwine, creating a remarkable spiritual tapestry. Three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, constantly lay claim to its wonders, emitting tensions from time to time. The Jews believe the land is their birthright, and after so many years of being occupied by others, will they be able to reclaim their land and build their house of worship? What does the reclamation signify for them and the world? Let's find out in this video. The Land of Israel is an ancient country officially known as the State of Israel. It is a country located in the Middle East, bordered by Lebanon to the north, Syria to the northeast, Jordan to the east, Egypt to the southwest, and the Mediterranean Sea to the west. The country holds significant historical, cultural, and religious importance, particularly for Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Historically, the region known as Israel has been inhabited for thousands of years, dating back to ancient times. Numerous empires and civilizations have risen and fallen, including the Israelite kingdoms, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and the Romans. Its history began when the 12 tribes settled in the land of Canaan, which encompasses present-day Israel, the Palestinian territories, and parts of the surrounding regions. Then, towards 1000 BCE, the Israelite tribes united under King Saul during the period known as the United Monarchy. When King David succeeded him, he established Jerusalem as the capital. King Solomon constructed the first temple on the Temple Mount, serving as a place of worship, the primary location for sacrificial rituals, and a symbol of the covenant between God and the Jewish people. After Solomon's reign, the kingdom split into the north and the south around 930 BCE. The kingdom of Israel in the north fell to the Assyrians in 722 BCE, and many of its inhabitants were exiled. Later, the Babylonians conquered the kingdom of Judah in the south in 586 BCE, and the first temple was destroyed. The Babylonian exile followed, during which many Judahites were taken captive in Babylon. After the Babylonian Empire fell to the Persians, Cyrus the Great issued a decree allowing the Jewish exiles to return to their homeland to rebuild their temple. This marked the beginning of the Second Temple period, during which the Second Temple was built in Jerusalem. In the first century CE, Christianity emerged in the region, and Jesus of Nazareth, considered the central figure of Christianity, lived and preached there. In 70 CE, the Romans destroyed the Second Temple during the Jewish-Roman War. The history of ancient Israel is closely intertwined with religious texts and archaeological evidence, and the narratives and events of this period have significantly shaped the Jewish people's cultural, religious, and historical identity and have had lasting impacts on the wider world. Although Israel was established a modern Jewish state in 1948, and since then has been a hub of cultural, historical, and political importance, with a democratic government and a thriving economy, a diverse population, technological innovations, and a strong military. Its association with many Bible events and religious figures still makes it often referred to as the Holy Land. And Jerusalem, its capital city, is of utmost importance to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, making it one of the world's most sacred and contested cities. Now let's discuss the significance of Jerusalem to these religions. Jerusalem holds immense significance in Judaism as one of the holiest cities. It is considered the spiritual and historical heartland of the Jewish people and is of utmost importance as it is mentioned over 600 times in the Hebrew Bible the Tanakh. The ancient Jewish temples were located on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, and the Western Wall, also known as the Wailing Wall, a remnant of the ancient retaining wall that once surrounded the Second Temple's courtyard, is also located in Jerusalem. The Western Wall has also become a place of prayer, pilgrimage, and reflection for Jews worldwide. In Jewish tradition, it is believed that the Divine Presence resides in Jerusalem. Moreover, Jewish tradition also states that Jerusalem is the future site of the Third Temple. On the other hand, the Christians do not claim to have an age-long attachment to the city. 
They consider Jerusalem a holy city primarily because of its association with Jesus Christ. It is where Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected according to the Christian belief. Jerusalem is home to other significant Christian sites besides the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is believed to be the site where Jesus was crucified, the Mount of Olives, where Jesus is believed to have had ascended to heaven, and the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus prayed before his arrest, are also sites of great spiritual significance. Additionally, Jerusalem is mentioned numerous times in the New Testament and is seen as the center of Jesus' teaching and ministry. In Islam, after Mecca and Medina, Jerusalem, known as Al-Quds, is considered the third holiest city. It is revered where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven during the night journey. The Al-Aqsa Mosque, located in the old city of Jerusalem, is considered one of the most important sites in Islam, and many prophets revered by Muslims in Islamic tradition, including Abraham, David, Solomon, and Jesus, are associated with the religion of Jerusalem. The Dome of the Rock, a golden domed structure, is also an iconic symbol and another cherished site within the compound. As a result, the city is considered a blessed land with deep historical and spiritual connections. However, while Jerusalem is undoubtedly a place of immense religious and historical importance for these three faiths, it is also a city that has witnessed ongoing religious and political tensions. It frequently serves as a reminder of a complex and intertwined nature of religious heritage and modern-day realities. The Jews have difficulty finding a place for worship since the destruction of the first and second temples, as they are accustomed to worshiping at temples and synagogues. The need to find a place to worship brought about the proposal to build the third temple, not only as a successor to the first and second temples, but also in fulfillment of a prophecy. But now, it doesn't seem as easy as it sounds. What are the problems of holding back the birth of a new temple? In the time since the fall of the Second Temple, after the attack of the Romans in 70 AD, various people of different ethnicities and heritages have migrated and covered the region, including the Temple Mount. The people of Israel cannot randomly take over the land without upsetting the dynamics of the land that is already in play. The region of the Temple Mount, a susceptible and contentious area due to its religious and historical significance, is central to Jerusalem one of the busiest cities in the country. A sudden change or move to rebuild would cause an upset amidst the social, political, and emotional state of the country, as its ownership and control have been a subject of dispute between Israel and Palestine for many years. If a new temple is built, the infrastructure would not be sufficient and considerable pressure will be added to the schools and hospitals built in the area. Aside from that, the area is so filled with archeological sites which might get disrupted if excavation and rebuilding began, much to the dismay of environmental enthusiasts. They would also not be happy about the biodiversity disruption caused by removing rare and endangered species from the area. Another setback Israel faces is due to the religious diversity that has taken over the area. Although the Jews believe the land is theirs to claim, Muslims strongly disagree with this, and this has caused violence and chaos in the past. The Muslim's revered site, the Dome of the Rock, is built on the Temple Mount. And to press home their point, Jews are banned from visiting the complex. For a long time, the Muslims countered the Jews' claims that any temples had been built there, until Robert Hamilton, a British archaeologist, provided proof. In his paper detailing his findings, he discovered that the Alaska Mosque was built on a Jewish ritual cleansing site and he achieved this breakthrough after an earthquake shook the mosque in 1927, causing severe damage and demolishing a part of it. The archaeologists discovered a mikvah, a Jewish ritual bath used for spiritual purification. The mikvah is only fed by natural sources, such as rainwater, or connected to a natural body of water, like a spring or river. It must be gathered and maintained following strict regulations to ensure ritual purity. This proves the presence of a previous temple, because these baths are so significant that they are usually constructed even before the temple. Once the Jews had this proof, the Sanhedrin began taking steps to begin temple services. This Jewish religious council was re-established in 2004 to revive Jewish law and temple services to prepare for rebuilding the third temple in Jerusalem. 
They have already made headlines since their establishment by taking steps toward the rebuilding of the temple. As a council, they recognize that the temple's rebuilding takes steps and have carefully begun them. One of these steps is the cultivation of farms and forests. The Sanhedrin claim that plants are used in most rituals in the temple. So new farms and forests have been cultivated under close and careful supervision to recreate Israel's environmental conditions in ancient times. Although the Sanhedrin are putting efforts to create and enabling an environment for the new temple, some people still question their authority, while others are concerned about the potential impact on the environment and the balance of the ecosystem. Still, the Sanhedrin is undeterred and primarily focused on promoting and preserving Jewish law and tradition. Another preparation in place in readiness for the rebuilding of the temple is the training of the Kohanim. Kohanim are members of the priestly class in Jerusalem, the descendants of Aaron, the brother of Moses, and have a unique role within the Jewish community. Their primary duty is to perform the rituals and ceremonies in the temple. However, with the absence of the temple, traditional priestly duties cannot be performed. However, Kohanim continue to have a revered status in Jewish communities, and they may still lead certain aspects of religious ceremonies and fulfill specific roles in some traditions. With the new developments, the Sanhedrin is taking steps to train the Kohanim on using the equipment of the old and new temples and altars and offering burnt offerings. Another essential preparation is the production of the red heifer. In addition to the ritual bath, the ashes of the red heifer are used in purification before entering the temple. And this poses a problem because red heifers are now extinct since only nine heifers were slaughtered in the time between the first and second temples. Still, the Sanhedrin seems always to be one step ahead as they are already devising methods to have an unblemished heifer engineered using the Red Angus as a base. Rabbi Chaim Richman, with a rancher and Pentecostal minister, Reverend Clyde Lott, understood the animal husbandry concept in an attempt to produce a red heifer, and it is made more complex as it has specific rules for its breeding. Recently, five red heifers were transported to Israel. They were bred by a group of farmers and left untagged to fulfill their requirements without blemish or spot. The heifers have been transported and kept in an undisclosed location in Israel. The heifers are now between one and one and a half years old, but need to be up to three years old before they can be used according to the ceremony in the Bible. Rabbi Yitzhak Mamot stated that the ceremony of the red heifer needs to be performed on the Mount of Olives and in a place that would have looked directly into where the temple stood, precisely at the front of the place where the priest that made this ceremony can see the holy of the holy place. Concerning the timeline of this, he believes that it is very likely that the ceremony would happen somewhere in Passover 2024, out to the possibility of Shavuot 2024. By then, the cows would be old enough. All steps seem to be in place for the rebuilding of the Third Temple, but the challenges the Jews are facing are beyond religious, but also political. A reasonable legal ruling has not been reached, and many believe it would take political action rather than legal for a peaceful consensus to be reached. Although Israel is a democratic country, its political system is intricate, surrounding the construction of the Temple with debate and discussions. The effect on the international community is also being considered. Israel's neighbors, the Arabs, feel that rebuilding the temple threatens their sovereignty. Also, Israel might be unable to foot the bill of building the temple single-handedly and may need to rely on financial aid from donors. This might lead to strain and tension, which they are trying to avoid and be bound to. How do they intend to settle this, and what is its significance? Mediators might have to step in the issue of rebuilding the temple, but many Bible scholars believe it is a prophecy fulfillment. According to Daniel's prophecy in the Bible, he received a vision from an angel that announced the coming of a Messiah, the destruction of a city and the temple, and the rebuilding of the temple. The prophecy describes the timeline for rebuilding the temple, and the countdown would begin from issuing the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. After rebuilding the temple, the prophecy predicted the arrival of an anointed one, who would later be killed and the temple destroyed. This prophecy seemed to have been fulfilled with the destruction of the second temple, 
A period of good living was expected after, before the arrival of a new ruler who would form solid alliances and covenants. In fulfillment of the prophecy, many people believe the new ruler would be the Antichrist. The Antichrist would be willing to support world leaders politically and even religious leaders to build the Third Temple, and so they would be willing to follow his teachings. According to the Bible and the scholars' interpretation, the Antichrist's rise to power signifies the beginning of the end days, the events leading up to the Battle of Armageddon, when the forces of the Antichrist would battle against Jesus Christ and his forces. The concept of Armageddon is gotten from the Christian Bible. Although some people are still determining whether this speaks of a particular location or the battle itself, the book of Revelations explains the battle as a final war between good and evil, after which the reign of Jesus Christ will be established. Israel is not backing down from the prospect of reclaiming their land, but we are gradually reaching the end of days. Are these prophecy fulfillments or signs? Let us know what you think in the comments. Like this video and subscribe to this channel for more like this.